The Battle of Pavón was a key battle of the Argentine civil wars. It was fought in Pavón in Santa Efe Acute Province, Argentina, on September 17, 1861, between the Army of the State of Buenos Aires, commanded by Bartolomé Maita, and the Army of Republic of the Argentine Confederation commanded by Justo José de Urquiza. The withdrawal of Urquiza left the field to Maita. It led to the dissolution of the national government and the reincorporation of Buenos Aires province into the Argentine Republic as a dominant member of the nation. Governor Bartolomé Maita would act as interim president, ratified by the National Congress, and then as the first president of a unified Argentine Republic. Background Political postures during most of the 19th century, Argentine history was defined by the theoretical, political and military confrontation between two postures. On one side the poor tennis from Buenos Aires wanted to impose their hegemony over the whole country. On the other, the people from the provinces wanted to decentralize the nation, giving state autonomy to the provinces. One difference between poor tennis and people from the provinces is that the former did not align directly with the two political parties of the time. Unitarians and Federalists existed both in the capital and in the provinces, even though they were against each other politically, when it came to defend their own local interests, they joined to confront their common enemy. Since the secession of Buenos Aires province on the 11th of September 1852, on the aftermath of the Battle of Caceres, Argentina was divided between two competing states, Argentine Confederation and the state of Buenos Aires. The Battle of Cepeda and the subsequent Pact of San Jose de Flores of 1860 set the conditions for Buenos Aires to rejoin the Confederation. However, both sides would clash again soon after. Conflicts in the interior during President Urquiza's government, the provinces had been at peace with the notable exception of San Juan province, where a political crime served as the catalyst for the Battle of Cepeda between Buenos Aires province and the Confederation. This changed when President Santiago de Cui took office. Several local cordillos, generically Unitarians, had been at peace with the government of the Confederation. When Dequi assumed office, they publicly became part of the opposition. Such were the cases of Manuel Taborda, from Santiago del Estero province, and José María del Campo of Tucumán province. Cordoba's governor Mariano Fraguero maneuvered poorly in his relations with the opposition. When the situation became violent, President Dequi intervened the provincial government. The most serious situation developed once again in San Juan province, where Governor José Antonio Virasoro was deposed and assassinated with the apparent support of some politicians acting in Buenos Aires among them the future president Domingo Fastino Sarmiento, who was born in San Juan. President de Cui again sent National Army to intervene that province, but the new governor, Antonino Oberistain, attempted to resist the intervention with the local militia. Oberistain was defeated and assassinated, which allowed the Buenos Aires government to accuse President de Cui of having committed a crime. Elections in Buenos Aires is a part of the process leading to the reincorporation of the state of Buenos Aires into the Argentine Confederation, established in the Pact of San Jose de Flores. After the 1859 Battle of Cepeda, Buenos Aires elected provincial deputies to the National Congress. However, the elections were carried out following the electoral laws of the state of Buenos Aires instead of those of the Confederation. The elected deputies were rejected by the National Congress and the Buenos Aires senators also staged a walkout in solidarity. President Santiago de Cui issued a decree invalidating the elections in Buenos Aires and established a new date for a rerun. But the Buenos Aires authorities rebelled against the national government and declared the Pact of San Jose de Flores null. 
Civil War the National Congress considered this as an act of sedition. So President de Quy named Entre Rios as general and former President Justo José de Urquiza as the commander-in-chief of the National Army with the task of returning the rebel province to the fold. In Buenos Aires, Governor Bartolomé Mita took the post of commander-in-chief of the provincial army. There were several attempts at mediation, from individuals, and foreign governments. All of them failed, due to Mita's and Dequis intransigence. Urquiza tried, until the last moment, to preserve the peace and declined to take the initiative against the Portana army as it was the request of his colonels Ricardo López Jordan and Prudencio Arnold. President de Quy organized an army in Cordoba, gathering an heterogeneous group of infantry units. These forces were augmented by Urquizas, with people from Entre Rios, Corrientes and Santa Fe provinces, plus some Portena defectors, the majority of these forces being cavalry units. In sum, the Federalist Army had about 17,000 men, where 8,000 came from the center region and 9,000 from Entre Rios, Corrientes, Buenos Aires and Santa Fe. Mitre's army was made of 22,000 men and 35 artillery pieces, plus a considerable numeric superiority of arms and artillery and infantry training. The British had supplied the artillery pieces and the trained. British artillery crews to operate them. De Quy advanced up to Rosario, where he left the command of the troops in the hands of General Urquiza, while Mitre advanced to the north of Buenos Aires and advanced into Santa Fe province. The battle. The armies clashed by the Pavon Creek, south of the city of Rosario, in Santa Fe province, about 260 kilometers northwest of Buenos Aires. Urquiza formed his troops in a defensive position, forming an extended line due east of the Domingo Palacios Ranch. On the wings he formed his cavalry. Arriving at 800 meters from the ranch, Mitre deployed his infantry, preparing for an assault on the enemy's center. But Urquiza's artillery started combat, opening great gaps in the Portena infantry, easy targets due to their colorful uniforms. Combat lasted only two hours, during which the Federalist left wing under Colonel Major Juan S.A.A., with the Santa Efe acute and renegade Portena troops of Ricardo López Jordan, completely vanquished the Portena 1st Cavalry. Under General and former Uruguayan President Financier Flores, chasing him past Arroyo del Medio, the Portena 2nd Cavalry, under the command of veteran General Manuel Hornos, offered more resistance, but it had to retreat, leaving behind most of their heavier weapons and supplies plus many prisoners. The right wing, under General Miguel Galatza steamrolled the small left-wing cavalry of Buenos Aires. The Federalist Center, instead, composed by untrained militia from the central regions of the country, was forced to retreat by the better trained and equipped Portena infantry battalions. Seeing the center's collapse, Urquiza abandoned the field of battle without adding the 4,000 men from Entre Rios that he had maintained in reserve, and marched to Rosario, then followed to San Lorenzo in Las Barrancas. At that point he received information of his cavalry's victory but he did not return to the battlefield. Historians have attempted to explain his retreat but there seem to be no satisfactory answer. The most common reason is attributed to Urquiza's being ill and another saying that he mistrusted President de Quy and feared treason. Urquiza's unexpected decision left the field open to the Portena army, which had retreated to San Nicolas de los Arroyos. Mitre decided then to consolidate his position before marching later on Santa Fe. Consequences The battles of Cepeda, Caceres and Pavon were possibly some of the armed conflicts with the most significance in Argentine history. By its institutional consequences, as by the realignment of almost every other political actor after each of the battles, after seeing Urquiza's inaction, Mitre gathered his troops. 
Part of the Federalist cavalry advanced to Pergamino, occupying the town. After a reaction from the Portena cavalry, the Federalists retreated back to Santa Efe Acute, and Mitre started his advance into that province. Several months had passed from the date of the battle. In the following months, the Portena advance was unstoppable. The only Federalist army capable of opposing them was Urquiza's, but he did not act and almost dismantled it. Seeing the interior being invaded, De Cui resigned and took refuge in Montevideo. A few weeks later Vice President Pedernera declared the national government dissolved. Starting on that moment, Mitre projected his influence in the whole country. All the federal governors, with the notable exception of Urquiza, were deposed in the final weeks of the year and the first few weeks of 1862. Some were deposed by local Unitarians, counting on the vicinity of the Buenos Aires army, others directly by the invading Portena army. The ones that avoided that fate came together to accept that the national government was over, and left to Buenos Aires Governor Bartolomé Mitre the task of the national reorganization. Mitre was elected president of the nation by means of new elections organized by the new provincial governors from where federalist candidates were forbidden. Poor Tennis also took the national government ministries and a good deal of the seats in Congress. The country's capital, which had been relocated to Parana by Urquiza, was again moved to Buenos Aires City. So the national government had to accept being a guest of the Buenos Aires City government. The location of the new national capital allowed the Portenas to defend their interests effectively. In the following years, Argentina maintained a nominal federal organization, but the strength and preponderance of Buenos Aires was unbroken. Bibliography Ruiz Moreno, Isidoro J. El Misterio de Pavón. Editorial Claridad. ISBN 950-620-172-2. Pérez Amachestga, J. A. L. Cronica Argentina, Buenos Aires. Editorial Codex. Luna, Felix, A. L. Grands Protagonistas de la Historia Argentina, Buenos Aires. Editorial Planeta.